Hi guys, Adam here as per usual. Hope you're all well. Hope you're having a good week. Um, I wanted to start off this year really with something I've been promising to do for a little while and something that's been asked about more recently as well as I've been sharing the Sky Paint Eclipse and that is a little kind of mini tour of the studio, all the gear I've got, a couple of my thoughts about the room and how I've laid everything out, etc. So let's get to it. <laughs> Alright guys, so what I'm going to do is go on handheld mode, so apologies, we might be in for a bit of a rocky ride. We'll have a look at the room, all the various bits of gear, a bit how it's interconnected, etc. Some of my thoughts on the studio and some of the plans I've got going forward. Now, I have been building this um, up quite a bit over the last sort of four or five months or so, so a lot of the gear that I've got, including some software, etc. You guys probably aren't aware I've had, and I probably haven't talked about it much. So I'll show you guys sort of the latest the latest setup, some thoughts on it, some thoughts on going forward as well. All right, guys, so we're stood kind of in the doorway facing into the studio. It probably looks a bit bigger on camera than it actually is. It's got to be two and a bit meters, maybe, and it's pretty much perfectly square, which is not ideal. So anyone who knows anything about studios, acoustics, that kind of thing, square room is the worst because basically we get um, massive peaks and troughs in the EQ spectrum things that you have to kind of work on there's always going to be compromises in a home kind of project studio as well and um, maybe I'll talk about that more in a later in the video or in another video uh, how I kind of compromise um, and the kind of tricks I've learned to deal with especially the low end one of the first things you'll notice stuck all over is these kind of um, homemade hessian sort of panels have quite a few of quite a few of those around on the roof as well they are kind of mid to high frequency absorption panels so they do really well at taming a lot of the sort of high end and upper mids and a lot of this sort of first reflection frequencies they're absorbed really well by these kind of diy uh, panels one of the things you'll probably have already noticed is there's no base trapping in the corners or anything like that unfortunately again just because of space limitations there's really no room for any base trapping and that's not ideal that is one of the things I would definitely love to change about this room is having it big enough to get some base trapping in there. Um, sadly at the minute that's just not just not possible. So one of the long term goals is uh, with the space in mind is to move upstairs into the loft, board it out, get everything el electrically wired, everything up there and hopefully then I could have a really good project studio set up. So that's something I'm trying to sweet talk the missus into uh, persuading me uh, persuading her to allow Let's that. start with the, the kind of centre point of the studio. So if you're sat in the kind of mixing seat, one of the things I have managed to get is almost perfect monitor placement. So it's almost at the perfect height. Could do with being a little bit wider just to spread the stereo image um, a, a bit more. You know, maybe a foot to two feet in total would be would be ideal for me. But I've got the height perfect the tweakers are perfectly kind of aligned with me here so i'm really pleased with that this stands out a bit like a sore thumb so it's my the electric piano i got for for christmas full 88 key a yamaha digital piano p45 model computer not going to talk too much about the 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 computer because i've got a whole video which i will link to um describing the new computer how i built it myself all of the parts that go into that but rest assured it's not an amazing computer but it's very very good for those not familiar that is sonar a uh, cakewalk sonar professional version i'm running now so the monitors are krk rocket fives i've used them for a long time now since i set up the studio probably had them six years maybe yeah probably five six years maybe longer because the five inch speakers they are limited in some of the frequencies they can produce they're not perfect but i've learned on them so i know them quite well now and um, these underneath are gale mark ii sort of hi-fi speakers um they're pretty much serving as speaker stands but i do also take the piano off there and listen to the mixes through the hi-fi as well which we'll have a look at down there that's the the main man there mr arnold schwarzenegger let's have a, a quick glance in the mic drawer and the, the spare cable drawer so it's pretty messy at the minute only got three mics that's something that i would have to consider definitely expanding of course classic Shure sm57 there um, SE Electronics X1, which is a great all-purpose kind of large diaphragm condenser. I use that probably more, well, easily more than any other mic. And here's a Lewitt LCT 640, I believe, that actually I was very pleased to, to win in a competition. 
that lure were running which was which was fantastic this is really an awesome large diaphragm condenser mic with a, a switchable polar patterns etc we'll have to get some videos done about that i was really grateful to win that in an ideal world i would love to add a couple of other sm57 and sm57 variants and um a roy r121 ribbon mic or something something similar the rest in there are patch cables um hose up balanced patch cables and that's to help um, wire the rack up that I'm going to be talking about now. Let's have a look at the rack. So it's expanded from the last time you guys seen it I believe. Definitely like to expand it further so it seems that when everybody at the minute's kind of focused on mixing in the box and digital technology stuff like that and I'm just really starting to get properly into analog gear. <laughs> I would really love some extra analog outboard but it's just it's just so expensive at the minute anyway power and most of the stuff in the studio is the samson power strip ps10 had that for a long time serving me really well next in line is the tam um, tampa mic preamp by m audio got a couple of sort of like gimmicks and stuff to it but these are actually really really good solid state mic preamps mic sort of channel strips it's got switchable impedance function which is something normally reserved for higher end um mic pre's for sure obviously provides phantom power low cut and it's got um uh, a full and very decent and very transparent especially at lower kind of settings uh, compressor a couple of decent quality vu meters and uh, digital digital conversion as well so it has its own analog to digital conversion in there which is which is awesome it often gets quoted as kind of like the poor man's avalon you know i've used an avalon but it was a long time ago in a, in a studio at university so i can't remember what it sounds like but the timbre is, is really clean really like it Next in line down here, PV tube sweetener, uh, tube line amp that I got recently. Haven't experimented too much with it. What it basically is, you can picture it as kind of a, a valve kind of a compressor in a way. It's got some compression factors as, as most valve driven things do. It's got a bit of EQ, a bit of compression. It's kind of, it, it is what it says actually. It's a tube sweetener. It can take the sound anywhere from dark to really dark and really warm to really bright and really harsh obviously the best settings are somewhere in between been experimenting with this for guitars a little bit and also whole mixes running them out into the tube sweetener and back in just adding a bit of that analog warmth fake a little bit of an analog summon kind of sound in there so yeah more on that as a kind of experiment with it but definitely liking it next in line we've got oh pretty trapped in here <laughs> The Palmer Decapo reamp and box use this extensively on the new album and in all the, the new videos and stuff. Really, really useful. This I haven't actually used yet, but just got hold of a Palmer Junction box, um, specialised guitar DI box and cabinet simulator. Going to experiment with that in the near future as well. Underneath we've got a Behringer patch bay. It's not yet set up and not yet wired up. You saw all the cables and stuff in the drawer below. Underneath the trusty Tascam US 1641, which is the main audio interface I'm using. And underneath that, the Yamaha SPX 50D, which I'm using only really for a, a couple of settings. It's got some great old school modulation sounds in there that I've used on the album as well. Okay, so that's it for the rack stuff here. A couple of couple of cables here. This is the um, the snake I was telling you about that I'm going to use to wire the, the patch paper hoser. Three meter snake. Um, seems like pretty decent quality hoses pretty renowned name for for patch cables in there in the studios in pro audio these are some red five um headphones they're not great headphones they're very kind of low quality in a way but they're great for checking mixes and masters on because that's the kind of quality that most people are going to be listening to your music on over here as i said i had the hi-fi cambridge audio system and a project turntable i use it mainly for for listening to music up here to be totally honest that's what it's for it's handy for for checking mixes on and stuff as well but really that's just that's one of my toys uh, down here is the the pedal board you guys know the ever ever changing pedal board but we'll do a full video on the pedal board the guitars there's the sir there of course amps showing you guys in a recent video being getting hold of a jet city um jca h20 i believe and there's the rack which is unchanged as well but a couple of things i'm thinking about moving adding in etc etc so i'll definitely do a video going through the guitars amps etc because i've got a couple of new guitars reasonably recently as well not the best angle but quickly look at some of the the software etc instruments got quite a few decent ones now i did get hold of contact 
um, not contact complete about 10 yeah complete 10 from native instruments lots of great synths in there that i'm still exploring i got that about five six months ago um drums you all know my main drum kind of program is superior drummer 2 also got a couple of others in there addictive drums too We're going to start experimenting a bit more with that as well decent sounds in there orchestral stuff and um, as well as contact libraries etc um, all I really use in here, True Pianos, Cakewalks, Decent, I use Ederol Orchestral as well for some more Cynthia orchestra sounds. As you can see I'm quite organised, I like to have everything organised in files. Dimension Pro gets some good use, that's a Cakewalk one. Contact 5 gets the most use to be totally honest with you. This is where most of my good uh, sample libraries are. Again, mainly all stuff that came with Complete Giants and Awesome Piano or Drum Lab, don't use that much. Contact Factory, Contact Factory Library, that's got some great orchestral stuff in there. Bass, keys, session strings, organs, African percussion, retro machines, cool retro synth, 60s drums, horns, and a variety of pianos there. Other synth stuff, native instrument. Um, don't use it much on the on the album at the minute, but I do love Absinthe 5. Absinthe's been one of my favorite synths for a long time. Massive's got some great sounds in, has as FM8. Reactor 5, I'm yet to delve into. You can make your own synths and effects and stuff in there. Haven't really delved into that yet. That's something I want to do. And Z3TA Plus or Zeta Plus from Cakewalks, another great synth. Some of these have crossover and they're going to achieve similar sounds, but some of them are really unique as well. In terms of um, effects and plugins, again, I like to have everything. Let's see if I can zoom in on that a little bit without completely ruining everything. Not the best angle, I do apologise guys. I like to have everything kind of like set out and labelled nicely. I'm not going to go through everything, some stuff I do like Guitar Rig 5, I really like Guitar Rig 5, got some great sounds in and favoured some of the stuff in Guitar Rig 5 for the album as opposed to actually reamping as well. TH2 producer, again TH2 has got some decent amp sims, some decent stuff in there. Compression, limiting and gating, compression is where I've spent most of my money because it's one of the main things that you're going to be using now. Um, 1176 sims really really love this uh, from waves uh, CLA is Chris Lord algae that's not gonna work there is it Adam of course not Chris Lord algae um, same with the 1176 got both the black kind of version and the earlier blue strike version which I really like it's a bit more aggressive a bit more saturated really like that great great compressor Fairchild emulation this blue tubes one never got away with too much I've done a full video of this as well on my channel just talking a bit about the overtone DSP Fairchild simulator I do like that one I like to strap that across the mix bus again Chris Lord Algae LA2A LA3A 2A style. I really like the 2A. I strap that across the um, the guitar bus and just get a bit more out of the bit more juice out of the guitars. Really like that. Limiting waves uh, pretty much owns the day for me here again. Ultra maximizer stereo. I'm using that as the main main kind of limiter in my quasi kind of mastering setup. Oh, and that's the first time I've crashed uh, crashed sonar. We're back guys, so sonar is really stable, that's the first time I've managed to crash it in a long time. Um, delay, I tend to use the delays from Guitar Rig 5 to be honest, but both of these blue tubes ones are pretty cool. Oil Can Echo is a really unique kind of sound and, sound and delay with some, some good 60s and 70s sort of sounds in there definitely. EQ, spent a bit of money in the EQ section as well. Really like this for, for mastering with Cakewalk Linear Phase. Wasn't so impressed with the waves Sheps 73, which is kind of like a Neve uh, channel strip simulation. Some other stuff in there that's decent. Pull text, this just goes absolutely everywhere in every mix. A couple of versions of the pull text, one from Blue Tubes, one from Overtone DSP. My favourite is the is the Waves one. Um really, really love this pull text simulation. It gets used on lots and lots of stuff. Modulation, don't have too much in there because I, I prefer to use analog run the out, outboard modulation, but the Blue Tubes analog chorus, I've used a lot on the album actually on some of the guitars and the pianos and stuff. It's a really nice sound and dual chorus. I do like that. Don't do a lot of stuff on the album with, with pitch, some stereo imaging every now and again on the guitars. Reverb, again, I, I, I tend to just go for sort of high quality, so I don't have a load of plugins, but what I do have is pretty high quality. Reverb 2 is awesome. Kickwalk Perfect Space is awesome. Blue Tubes, Blue Verb, not so awesome. Really like this, the J37. This is the tape simulator that I'm that I'm running. It's great for tape delays and um, also just for tape tape simulation. It's quite I've, 
it's new to me I've only had it a, uh, a couple of weeks or so at the time of doing this video so I'm still experimenting with it but I'm really liking the sounds that I can get from it and that's that's pretty much it for the interesting stuff right guys so there you have it I hope that you found that useful or at least interesting in some way any questions about any of the gear or any of the setup things to come etc please post them below remember that all your questions as well I do add to kind of like a word document or database if you like of questions that I am slowly but surely trolling through going through and answering in exactly this kind of video so I do hope you enjoyed it guys stay tuned for plenty more and until next time take it easy